Next one. Hey guys, when running press release campaigns, would it be a good idea to iframe in the target money page as well? Or just a URL to the target page? Um, no, I don't I don't like to iframe money sites into I haven't tested out with the press release, but I don't the problem that I've the only time I like to iframe money sites into anything is other branded assets and preferably like supporting brand, branded assets. So other tier one entity assets, that's it. And the reason why, and it's funny because I just had a sales call earlier today for Semantic Links and I was telling the prospect on the call that uh, he was asking about iframes specifically. And <clears throat> I learned uh, earlier this year that sometimes the, if you iframe the money page into another property, sometimes that property will cannibalize the money page. And what I mean by that is with my link building business, some one of the you know types of links that I build are what I call custom rebuilds, which are going out and hunting down expired domains that were in the same topical category that have clean backlink profiles. They have uh, high um, you know trust flow above 10, but in the appropriate topical trust flow category. I don't really care about trust flow values in and of themselves. What I care about is topical trust flow. So finding a domain that has all clean metrics, relevant history, uh, has topical trust flow in the appropriate category, all of that. And then publishing a new article on that, which I've done, and then embedding a money page into that. I've actually seen this happen earlier this year when I was part of my link building process was to do embeds. I still do embeds, but I only embed now the Google business website or Google business map, or we'll do tier, tier two embeds with tier one branded assets as the embed, as the iframe, if that makes sense. I don't iframe the money pages at all anymore other than in like the ID page, for example, or the press advantage organization page, something or the G site that which is a branded entity asset. Um, because as I was just mentioning, like the uh, rebuilds, the custom rebuilds, I've, I've seen it happen on more than one occasion where we would embed the money page into a rebuilt site that had relevant content, because we do a 1000 plus words, relevant content, and the domain metrics were such that wouldn't when so let's say the money site page was originally ranking in the fifth position five on page one, then I would embed that page into a custom rebuild that had clean history, appropriate topical trust flow, all that. And then a week later, the money site page is no longer on the first page of Google. Now the rebuild domain is. And so it's because it basically replaced or cannibalized the money page. And I don't want that. So um, I stopped doing that. So I haven't tested that with press releases. But I, as I mentioned before, I do not like to iframe the money site in anything other than branded entity assets because of potential cannibalization issues. Otherwise, any any other type would just be a, a straight up anchor text link is what I recommend. And by the way, guys, use brand anchors uh, mostly, especially, especially if you're going to be linking your money. And I don't recommend using press releases to link directly to your money site. Um, I, if you're going to use press releases, I, I highly recommend that you are that you use your Google Business website as a buffer and not just the website, but specifically posts. In fact, just to demonstrate this again, if we go to the YouTube channel and we use channel search feature, let me just show you. Just type in press uh, release silo, right? Or PR silo or uh, whatever. And you'll see that, <clears throat> let's see, I thought maybe that's an unlisted webinar. Maybe it is. Um, well, here's an old version of it that I did three years ago. I, I bet you the one that I was just going to <laughs> share is a, is unlisted. Um, but you know what? We could make that one public. In fact, let me do that real quick because I think this would be a good – let me do that real quick. I'm going to pause it for a minute, guys, and jump into Creator Studio, find that video, and make it public, and then I'll share it with you. Um, but I did an update to the local PR Pro training course uh, in December of 2021, so almost a year ago now. And that is still the method that I'm using now for press releases. It works really well and it's safe. Um, you don't have to worry about sending non top, non, you know, relevant like links from press releases where um, let me let me pull this up real quick and I'll show you what I mean. I, I'm gonna have to give some context on this press release. Sorry. Um, give me one minute. There it is right there. Yes, it was unlisted. I'm going to make it public. 
So this was an update from our paid training for local PR pro, but I'll go ahead and just say, share it now. Um, all right. So we're going to go back to the channel. And I'm going to show you guys where to find this. Oops, cancel, save. Okay. Go to channel. All right. So in here, use the channel search feature and search for just like PR silos or press release silos or something like that. It doesn't matter. Just search for that and you should see it come up well i just made it public so maybe it hadn't come up yet anyway son of a bitch let me just give you a goddamn link <laughs> um, <laughs> this is driving me nuts now i think it's because i just made it public that it's um it's not going to show up right away it'll take a minute for the algorithm to catch up and oh, god damn it i can't find this to save my life now oh, shit also just wanted to say i saw a comment right on on uh youtube chat that was super nice so somebody uh, with their nickname Potato, so just found your channel. Starting my own rank and rent agency. Tons of value here. We'll binge watch your all your playlists and then sign up for the mastermind later. That's awesome. Great. Well, be on the lookout because the video bucket that I talked about at the beginning that I'm learning from the channel Jumpstart program, um, creating a video bucket. My bucket is rank and rent SEO, and uh, I'm going to do a whole series on, like from start to finish, on how to build a rank and rent business. Seriously. So that's going to be what I start. Uh, producing training it'll be public training that's not paid training it'll be public so it'll be um that's that's what i'm going to do for my channel jumpstart stuff my homework and um really looking forward to it i've been doing a ton of research over the last month and compiling data and all kinds of stuff so you guys will hopefully be uh find that useful anyway um eventually that will show up in my in our search but it was basically this video here called uh pr silos local pr pro update from december 2021 um, I don't know why two buddies doing this, but anyway, um, that's a 32 minute video. It was, it was from a webinar update webinar. It talks about the very specific process I use for building links, uh, from press releases using the Google business website, but specifically posts as the buffer. Okay. So you do an exact match keyword anchor, um, from the press releases to your target URLs, um, uh, excuse me, to the Google business post URL. Okay. The Google business post URL, you put in the CTA button, the call to action button, you select either book or learn more is that button type, which allows you to insert a URL, right? That links to that URL. So you link to whatever page it is on your money site that you're trying to promote that you was, you would have otherwise promoted with a press release, a direct link. You want to link to that page or post on the money site with the CTA button from a Google business post. You summarize that content to, for the, of that page that you're, that you're linking to, you just summarize that content into the post text or the, the text of the Google business post. So between 200 to 225 words ish, right? So it's about 1500 characters. You just summarize that post, make sure that the keyword is in the first line of the text in the Google business post. Then you publish the post, you wait for the post to appear on the Google business website. Then you go copy the URL from the post as like an inner page of the Google business website. That becomes your target URL, which then you can link to with exact match anchors or target anchors, target or topic anchors. A target anchor is keyword plus location modifier. A topic anchor is keyword only. Okay, so a target or topic anchor links directly to that Google business post URL. Then I always recommend having a second link in the press release that either links to the Google map share URL or a, a Google um, business review share URL. Or if you're doing a press release silo, then you would link to the previous press release in a silo. Um, you can do that as well, which is what I was covering in this update webinar that I was just showing you here. Um, okay, so that that was be it. Now, the reason I pulled up this tool is because I talk about this all the time, but this is how I developed my, this is what seeded the idea for me to build semantic links, which is the topically relevant link building business that I have, right? And that was because of this tool. And very specifically, it's not really the tool that, this is what gave me the idea, but it's the process that Google uses now to determine the relevance of links. And if links aren't relevant or fully relevant, then the value has been reduced, lessened by Google. If they're not relevant at all, then the link is completely worthless. So that means if there's not any sort of relevance match at both the page level or at, at any level. So like, for example, this is, this is the, and this is what Google's algorithm does automatically now. The NLP, like the NLP natural language processor is like another layer on the core algorithm now, right? So when a when when the Googlebot comes and crawls a page, 
it first identifies what the topical categories are of the content of that page, the target page. Once it classifies or assigns the topical categories via Google's NLP topical categories, which are very close, very closely aligned to uh, Majestic's topical trust flow categories. There are some differences. They're not exactly the same, but they're very close, which is precisely why I use Majestic for topical trust flow analysis. It's the only tool that does that. And again, their topical trust flow categories in Majestic are very similar to NLP categories here. So uh, when Googlebot comes and crawls the, the target page, it first identifies the topical categories and assigns the categories to that content. Then it, it goes and scans the backlinks that are pointing to that target URL. And it determines, is there, and it, it classifies the topical or the, uh, categorizes the topic topics of each one of those pages, the main content area of each one of those referring pages. And it looks for a match. Is there a topical relevance match? Depending on how many categories it finds, it's always going to find one topical category, usually finds two or three topical categories, and sometimes it will find four. And so what it does is it, it first identifies the categories of the target page, then it scans the backlinks and does the same process. It looks to determine what are the topical categories of those referring pages. Is there a relevance match? Is it a one-to-one, one-to-two, one-to-three? One to one to one to depends on how many topical categories it found, uh, both on the target as well as the uh, refer referring page. Then it also scans what are the topical categories of the domain itself, the most the primary or most prominent topical categories of the domain. And there has to be a relevance match across all three of those, right? So target, referring page, referring domain. It doesn't have to be 100%. If there is a 100% topical relevance match, like what you see with this one example here, then that link is given full value, full weight. If there is a partial match, then that link has been devalued. There's a, it depends. There's a lot of variables, variables to determine how much that link has been devalued. Maybe not entirely. So, for example, if you have uh, domain or backlinks that the referring page is relevant, there's topical relevance match, but the, do, the referring domain does not have topical relevance match. Then that link is there's still some value from that link, but not as much as if there was also relevance match at the domain level. But if the link has a zero page relevance match and zero domain relevance match, that link is worthless. It's providing no value, none whatsoever. It's just completely being ignored. And I don't care what the UR DR rating is. I don't care what the PA DA rating is. If there's zero relevance match, Google's ignoring that link now. Um, there may be some cases where like certain super high powered links will still provide some measurable value. But for the vast majority of links that you're going to get, they're not significant enough to where they're going to produce any result unless there's some sort of topical relevance match. They're just being devalued. And it's being done algorithmically now, guys. It's not something that requires manual review like it used to five years ago. Does that make sense? So the reason why I bring that up is because specifically going back to the question about press releases, the problem with press releases, which is why I don't rank or don't, excuse me, don't use press releases to link directly to money sites anymore is because the, there's no re, there's no domain relevance match from press releases unless you're in the news industry, right? Your target asset is a news site or something like that, because generally the, the there might be some relevance at the page level because the content of the press release should be relevant to what it's linking to. So there should be page relevance match. There should always anytime you're going to build a link, buy a link, whatever it should there should be page relevance match, at least partial page relevance match. It's called a contextual link for a reason. It's in context. The context that surrounds a link should be relevant to what it's linking to. Does that make sense? So, but so on press releases, the page, you're, you will have page relevance, sure. But what about domain relevance? What are the primary topical categories of the domain that that press release is published on? And generally, there are going to be nothing that's even remotely close to what the topical categories are of your target. So therefore, those links are not providing much value. They are good for local. They're good for maps ranking because of the citations NAP mentions within the press releases, right? Those are That's really good for maps, which is precisely why I use press releases to link to Google business posts. Because I can, that, again, that's remember a Google business website guy, guys is a bridge between organic and maps, right? The Google business profile is maps. The web, the money site is organic. The Google business website is a bridge between organic and maps. So if you use the, the press releases to link to the Google business website, preferably Google business posts, because then you can control the one target URL from the Google business post through the CTA button, which is a do follow link, by the way, um, because now you're, you're kind of pushing NAP relevance from press release publications 
to the Google business website, which is a bridge between organic and maps. And then you link, and also it's going to have a map embed, or it should if you're doing local projects. So now you get map embeds. And then you also link to, as I mentioned in the uh, webinar that I just, just uh, shared with you guys, or the update that I just shared with you guys, linking to a Google business map share URL and or a Google business review share URL, again, is more signals to the Google map. Does that make sense? So uh, very specific. I've been using that strategy for press releases ever since. Um, well, before I did the webinar about it, but I've been, that's, that's the method I still use to this day. Okay. And I, even in my link building business, I do sell the occasional press release. Um, it's an add-on service, but occasionally people will come in and just purchase a press release and I, and they'll submit their details and I will send them a message. Like, cause most of the time people will submit their money site URL to be linked to in the press release. And I'll submit them, uh, reply back to them and say, Hey, I'll do this if you want, but here's what I recommend. And um, most most people say, yeah, go ahead and let's let's go your route instead. Because again, I've tested this, guys, and it works much better. I don't like to build any sort of links to the money site that aren't topically relevant at both page level and domain level. It doesn't have to be 100% match, but there needs to be a at least partial match at both levels, or I don't want the link. Not pointed to the money site anyways. Does that make sense? It's all about topical relevance, guys. We're in the semantic web. Um, that's not going to change. So these traditional metrics, getting high URDR ratings, high PADA ratings with no topical relevance means nothing to me anymore. Um, I, like I said, if I can get links that are topically relevant that also have those high traditional metrics, hell yeah, I'll take that. Bonus, score, right? But uh, I don't care about those metrics individually at all. What I care about is topical relevance, period. And it works. It works well. There's another good question, by the way. <laughs> 